see? Well, it depends on where they go. Uh, if uh, you have a relationship with someone in this life and you go to the same destination in the next life, according to your karma, I suppose it's possible to have a relationship. But for the most part, the people who have relationships in this material world having relationships on the material platform, not on the spiritual platform. So those people, those relationships don't last. I mean, they don't even last in this world. How can they last into the next world? Uh, um, I'm always kind of amused when people talk about soulmates and stuff like this. Uh, and then you ask, well, you know, what kind of relationship do you have? And it turns out it's just a material relationship based on sex or something like this. Um, but a real soulmate would be like uh, Vrishni and Sutapa, who are described in Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Vrishni and Sutapa, they both had the desire to become the mother and father of Krishna. And so their whole lives, they performed devotional service with the aim of becoming Krishna's parents. And so in their next life, they were born as King Nanda uh, and his mother, Yashoda, I mean his wife, Yashoda. And they became the mother and father of Krishna, Nanda and Yashoda. But in their previous life, they had... Uh, worked together with the same spiritual aim. Therefore, their spiritual destiny was the same. In this world, this is very rare. Most people, they have different aims, different purposes, even spiritually. Huh? Uh, I don't know any of my god brothers, for example, who have the same kind of realization of Krishna that I do. So I'm probably not going to see them in the spiritual world because they're going to be in a different part of the spiritual world. Uh, I'm going to be having my particular kind of relationship with Krishna and they're going to be off having their relationship. In the spiritual world, our primary relationship is with Krishna, not with anybody else. Those relationships are there, but they're secondary. Very secondary. <laughs> so what would determine if two people who have a relationship now can have a relationship in a future existence would totally depend on their spiritual vision and aspirations and the sadhana that they're doing, the particular spiritual aim that they're cultivating and the particular mood of service that they are developing uh, towards the Lord. And this is something that's uh, an eternal quality of the soul. It's not something that you can artificially cultivate. Uh, for example, if someone's uh, natural quality is to be a servant of the Lord, in, let's say, a Dvorka Lila or something like that, then it would be uh, unreasonable to expect that if you have a, a different kind of relationship with the Lord, that you would be able to continue that relationship with them in the spiritual world. It's a very complicated subject matter huh? because it's based on some very high realizations of spiritual moods which most people don't understand because they haven't read the Nectar of Devotion. The Nectar of Devotion describes all these things in detail. Um, Swati asks, does a soul have any choice in picking the species family that will be born in? No. No, our karma is determined by higher authorities. But of course, I mean, in, in the sense that we can change the activities that we're performing in this lifetime, in that way we have a choice. Huh? Like if someone is smoking and drinking and eating meat and, you know, taking drugs and having sex and all the, there's no way they can expect to have a human birth in the next life. No way. Uh, but if someone wants a human birth in the next life, at the very least, they have to be a religious person. 
And according to Vedic standards, that means no killing, no stealing, uh, telling the truth, study the Vedas, performance of religious rituals. That's the minimum standard for a human life in the next birth. Everybody else is going to a hellish existence in the next life. You know, I'm sorry, I wish it wasn't that way, but that's the way it is. That's what the Vedas say, so we have to accept that. Okay, then never has a question. Babaji, you mentioned that the self-realized person does not need to take shelter of any scriptural practices. How do we then understand the behaviors of devotees like Guru Maharaj at the, end, uh, at the time after he completed his reign when he was already self-realized? When he goes and asks for the blessings of wishes, etc. He's showing the example. Just like Jesus Christ was born perfectly self-realized, uh, pure devotee, Nitya Siddha, uh, or Srila Prabhupada for that matter. Same example. He's born Nitya Siddha, fully self-realized. But still, he takes a guru, he performs sadhana, and he does all kinds of activities to show the proper example. Because that's the duty of a self-realized soul. Uh, I mean, actually, there is no duty for a self-realized soul, but usually out of compassion, they will try to show a good example uh, without compromising their realization as far as possible. You see, um, for example, there's a discussion in the third adhyaya, third pada of Vedanta Sutra, that when a soul becomes self-realized, uh, is he obligated to perform Vedic rituals such as Varnashram Dharma or not? And the conclusion is that he's not obligated. Why? Because the duty of a self-realized soul is to hear, chant, and meditate about the glories and qualities and pastimes of the Lord. That's the only duty of a self-realized soul. In other words, the actual platform of the Vaishnava is very, very exalted. It means that he has self-realization. He has actually seen the Lord face to face. That's the actual meaning of Brahmana. A Brahmana is someone who has actually seen the Lord face to face. And then his duty is to uh, show a good example to others. But he doesn't have to. If he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. Huh? But out of compassion, we see that usually they teach or they preach or they perform Vedic rituals or write books or do something to help the other spirit souls. But actually, that's not their duty. Their only duty is to glorify and contemplate the Supreme according to their realization. That's why we often see that self-realized souls act very eccentrically. Huh? like Vamsi Das Bhabhaji and, and people like that. They don't actually follow all the rules and regulations. Why? Because they already got the benefit of following the rules and regulations. Huh? Just like if I, if I take a ba bath and clean myself very nicely, then I don't have to go back and take another bath. Huh? Why? Because I'm clean. Otherwise, we'd be taking bath all the time, right? <laughs> So, if there's no necessity for purification, then why should someone spend all that time and energy performing rituals for purification? They're already pure. So the self-realized soul, their only duty is to glorify the Lord and, and contemplate and worship Him. And they can do that externally or internally. Usually they choose to do it internally. Why? It's simply easier. Uh, so then, what do they do externally? Well, they can do anything they like. That's according to uh, Vedanta Sutra. Um, another okay. question by Neville. When Krishna says there is no diminution on the spiritual path, how do we understand the regression of the soul into lower species of life? Well, that's because they don't have any transcendental realization to begin with. Uh, when, when Krishna says there's no diminution, He's talking about those things that are spiritual. Uh, just like 
Bhagavad Gita 2.16 says, Of the things that exist, they are permanent. And of things that are temporary, that means they're non-existent. So when someone attains transcendental realization, that's eternal. Because everything spiritual is eternal. The soul is eternal, God is eternal, the spiritual world is eternal. But everything in this material world is temporary. So when a soul performs activities of material quality, that generates karma. And according to that karma, they may have to fall down into the animal species or whatever. Uh, but all that is temporary. Krishna is talking about, he, uh, he makes sure that once we realize something of the spiritual nature, we never lose that. Um, the, the question by Andresh, 